There's a reason for everything. No one's just paying you less because you're women. There's a reason for everything. If we keep it at a stack, four years, 154 for LeBron fucking James? That's underpaid like crazy. People talk about like Bill Russell and stuff like that. They discredit him by saying he was playing against a bunch of fucking male men and, and milkmen and all that other stuff, which is true. The NBA or the, the job that they were playing from wasn't making enough money for them to just live on their own. You're just not making that much money in the beginning, in the infancy stage of the league or whatever, or maybe another 25 years down the line, the players who are playing then could pay a whole bunch, a whole lot more money than you are currently. It, it's strictly based on how much money the league makes. Therefore, it can pay the teams and then the teams can pay players, the coaching staff, all, the, all that other WNBA players are delusional. What the hell? What is your message to the sporting industry about why women deserve to make just as much as men do? Just wake up. Wake up <laughs> and realize that without women, where are, where are we at? Yeah, I'm not sure if sports fans are the ones that need to wake up. Welcome back. Man, that's a really tough convo, bro, because it's like, I don't, I don't, I don't... <laughs> Because it sounds like a real simple thing to, like, just talk about, like, there's a reason why you get paid a certain amount. But it's like, they may understand it, but they probably don't want to hear it. You get, you eat what you kill. You get paid what the people that are employing you make. Because not all of you are going to make the same exact salary, but <laughs> you're going to make a, a, enough money for you to have a... Uh, I wouldn't say that because... I take that back, actually, um, because there is there isn't a lot of money, but there's a reasoning behind that. There is a reasoning behind that, and it's because that the W the WNBA isn't as entertaining as the NBA because it's not as athletic as the NBA. You don't have women women with forty foot verticals and you know be able to do windmills and all that other crazy stuff. That's how you because. Not every NBA fan is a diehard NBA fan. They, they, they break down the game. They watch the game. They study the game and all that other stuff. The average fan of the NBA is the casual fan. And the casual fan, if you ask them, hey, would you rather watch the NBA or the WNBA? They're going to say the NBA majority of the time. I would say more so about 95, 90 to 95% of them will probably say the NBA. And if you ask them their reasoning, it'll, it'll, if you ask them their reasoning, it will be because, oh, it's more fun to me. Why is it more fun? Because guys, the guys are much capable, are capable of doing much more entertaining things. Like the dunking, the alley-oops, all that stuff is more uh, capable for the man to do rather than the woman on the court. I'm not a sexist, I'm just a realist. So, WNBA players, sure, are they, are they, are they vastly underpaid? Absolutely. Compared to the NBA players, they're vastly underpaid. But, at the same time, you can only get paid what your employer is making. Well, not what they're making, but you can only get paid a portion of what they're making. And if what they're making isn't enough, because you know the casual the casual viewer isn't going to isn't likely to watch the WNBA as opposed to the NBA, even though they're on at separate times of the year, or well, in the in a regular setting because COVID fucks shit up. Uh, yeah, so even though. Um, yeah, they, they would much rather watch it from a different, um, from a, uh, they'd much rather watch the NBA rather than WNBA because it's a much more entertaining time. And when you're looking to be entertained, you're going to go to something that you know is going to entertain you more times than not. And that is the NBA. With the WNBA, I feel like a lot, it's almost like, the WNBA is almost more like, uh... Let's take it like this. The WNBA, the, the NBA is the UFC, right? Everybody watches the UFC. The UFC makes crazy money and their and their fighters get paid for the most part. From what I know, there could be like a, a, a controversy or whatever. But the, the UFC is a much more MMA as a whole is a much more is an entertaining sport. Right. And people will, will watch MMA just because they know that they're going to be entertained. Now, if you ask those same people, would they rather watch an MMA or a UFC fight or a jiu-jitsu bout? They're going to say the UFC. Why? Because jiu-jitsu isn't as entertaining as the MMA. Mixed martial arts. Because in mixed martial... And this is actually a pretty solid example because 
in mixed martial arts, you can actually get to hit your opponent. In jiu-jitsu, uh, in Brazilian jiu-jitsu tournaments, it's strictly grappling. And if you want to put that in context of basketball, there's dunking in basketball with guys, and there isn't with women. So there's there's one thing that's missing from the other, and that one thing is causing uh, the one one thing to make more money and the other to make less money. So there's a reason for everything. No one's just paying you less because you're a woman. There's a reason for everything. My brothers, it's your boy J Dog. I assume you tuned into this video for some more WNBA delusion. In this video, we have two women to feature. One of them lives in La La Land, and the other one, she actually kind of gets it. She knows what's going on. She isn't as delusional as the other one. Let's get into it. The Los Angeles Times calls him LA's new king this morning after the four time MVP agreed to a four year. Look at that goat. Look at that goat. And, and, and if, we be, if we keep it at a stack, four years, 154 for LeBron fucking James? That's, under, that's underpaid like crazy. 154 for LeBron? Nah. <laughs> nah, see, and I'm not even a LeBron stan. I'm, uh, well, I kind of am a LeBron stan now, but when I was a kid, I did not fuck with LeBron whatsoever. But at the same time, 154 Le for LeBron sounds outrageous, my nigga. That sounds crazy. 154 for the best player in basketball at the time. You know, some people might want to jump on the Giannis shit. And I, I think going into next season, Giannis should be considered the best player because he was the best player on the championship winning team. And he and it wasn't even close. But, you know, you know, KD, Kyrie, all that, whatever. I understand that. Um, but back to LeBron. I don't know why I went on that little tangent. Um, LeBron is vastly underpaid compared to the other people that make way more money than him in the NBA. <laughs> Rudy Gobert makes more money than LeBron James. On this contract, Jason Tatum makes more. Jason Tatum's new deal is more than LeBron's uh, contract when he first signed with the Lakers. He makes more money than him right now. Well, the contract that he's on right now, he makes more money than LeBron when he first got this contract. I don't know if he like renegotiated or whatever, but at the time, Luka Doncic, two hundred and seven million. And I understand there's and also I'm I usually forget to take this into consideration. LeBron switched teams. LeBron could have easily re-signed with the Cavs and then got a sign-in trade to go there, whatever, whoop de whoop But it didn't happen, so he, he he was able to make more money in Cleveland if he stayed as opposed to going to a new uh, destination. So, I could, uh, but we all, everyone knows LeBron is not worth 154 mil. So he's vastly underpaid. With the Lakers. $154 million. With that much money, you could buy more than 54,000 Hondas or 400 homes or about 120,000 refrigerators. That's how much money LeBron what is happening. What is happening? What is happening? What is happening? What is happening? For the next four okay. years. I kind of hate when people talk about money like this. Like, yeah, his contract is $154 million, but he's going to lose half of that. It's going to be gone. You know, you lose taxes. You chunk to taxes. And of course, you got to pay your agents, managers, all those people that show up behind the scenes. They got to get a slice of the pie. Hold on, is this 2K on the phone, on like mobile? He's really, only gonna get half of that shit. While playing and practicing like the men, female basketball players' paychecks don't include as many zeros. The WNBA max salary caps at a little more than 117. Which is a lot of money. But when you try to put it in comparison to what the NBA players make, that looks like that looks like pennies. But that is a lot of money, $117,000 a year. But also, like what the young what the guy in the video said, that's at, that's before taxes. But even then, let's say and they worked a lot a lot of them worked two jobs, max salary like a girl like um Skylar Diggins or like Deanna Taurasi because I don't know exactly I don't remember which NBA player exactly said this, but they they um they will play in the WNBA, and then after that, they will go play in, like, Europe or something like that. So you combine those incomes, and it, you combine those incomes, you're probably making over, well, this person that makes max here. And then they could probably make even more money overseas, because overseas players usually, they usually spend money on, on good overseas players over there. So she could probably make upwards of, like, 150, 150K, right? So you combine both of those and you're doing what you like. You're doing what you like to do. You may not like the fact that you have to go overseas to play basketball, but you're playing basketball. Something that you what that you've been doing since a little kid and you wanted to be doing when you're an adult. 
So, <laughs> hey man. Compared to NBA referees who make a hundred and fifty thousand dollars. All right. All right. Okay. 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 I get the referee thing. I could. I could. I, I could understand. I can understand. Was that the max for? To NBA oh no, that's just period. That's just a standard. <laughs> Referees make one hundred fifty thousand a year. Is that? I wonder. Do they get pay raises? Can if they perform well? If the referees, you know, how, how can a referee be? Can their salary be raised? One hundred fifty k a year is amazing. To be a NBA referee, bro. To be an NBA referee, and if you're on top of your shit, you you could use that money and start some a whole bunch of other like businesses. You could you could rent you could buy a condo, rent it out on Airbnb, and you have a, another source of income that way. Like bro, like 150 150k, 100 I can do that. I can do that with 117, bro. A <laughs> who makes oh my gosh. Yeah, NBA refs, they have a union that helped get them that pay, all right? They they work for that. They, they really don't contribute to money being made, but the league still needs them. They're still needed. The Facts. NBA players, they're the reason the league makes money. They contribute to the money being made, so they make money off of what they produce. True. As a rookie, my salary started at... Cheyenne Parker, Chicago Sky Forward. Let's go look at Cheyenne's numbers. That's it. Let's just, let's just look at Cheyenne... Cheyenne, this is a guy. What was her name? Parker, professional basketball player. She's 6'4", 193 from Queens, New York. Shout out Queens, New York. That's where I was born. Um, Yusuf Parker. I feel like I've heard that name when it comes to. Oh, he's not a basketball player himself. Okay, whatever. It doesn't matter. Let's WNBA, WNBA.com. Give me that bag. Facts. Give me that. That 150, that 117? That 117. Give me that one. Give me that 117, please. If that's what you're talking about. Come on, Cheyenne. Cheyenne. <laughs> Cheyenne. Come on now, bro. Come on. And obviously, I'm saying this in the context of the fact that the you the players in the WNBA get paid what uh the league makes, right? You can only make a portion of what the league makes. With the revenue that the league brings in, you're able that that money gets trickled down to the organizations, and that money eventually gets trickled down to you in your contracts, right? So, how much do you want to get paid based off how much the league makes and the team makes, right? Based off you scoring seven point two points per well, ten point two points per game. And actually, let's go back to this was twenty eighteen, right? Okay, she had a double she had a double digit season that year. How much do you want to get paid? Actually, I don't even want to do that right now. Let me look at the teams because I actually want to take things into consideration. I just don't want to say things just for the sake of saying them. I want to look at the averages for certain teams. WNBA score average score per NBA game. 81. Okay. So her scoring 10 points is actually pretty solid. Her scoring 10 points in a WNBA, WNBA game is like an NBA player scoring like 15 to like 16, maybe 17 points per game, right? So that's pretty significant considering the score only goes up to, on average, usually only goes up to 81, right? So... I would, I would still would like to ask her how much do, does she think she deserves to be paid only, well, I don't want to say only because I'm trying to like, you know what I mean? But 10 points per game. Let's, um, NBA scoring leaders. Let's see who averaged like, um, like 10, 15, oh, no, 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 not that. Points, 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 points. Jason Tatum was a top. What? No, that has to be playoffs. Yeah, that has to be playoffs. That can't... No, yeah, that has to be playoffs. Postseason. Jason Tatum was not a top five scorer in the NBA this year. He's, he's almost top 10. All right, so let's see who averages like... Um, yep, revenue sharing is everything as well as TV rights. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, 15... 15 points per game, 
someone just invited me to a party. I don't want to take like a guy who's on his rookie deal because at the time she was in her bro. What the fuck? Someone keeps on. She was on her um. Uh, the rookie, do WNBA rookie contracts are they the same length as like uh, NBA contracts, like r rookie contracts? Is it like two years and then like player? I mean team options and stuff like that. I don't know, but let's just assume that it is because it is the same game. Uh, you're putting the ball into the hoop. So let's say, well, actually, okay, let's do Tyler Hero. No, I want somebody who's not on a rookie. No, shit, no, 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 no. Let's. Well, I have to. I have to. I have to. Um. Oh, it's not going to show this on here, is it? Uh, Tyler Hero contract. Tyler contract. <laughs> Tyler Hero contract. All right, sport track. Here we go. This is probably what I'm looking for. Oh, but by the way, I didn't mean to. What's going on? N2 Media. I know I kind of like been talking to you a little bit or reading what you've been saying, but what's going on, man? How are you? Um, his rookie deal, base salary, cap hit that cap. Da, 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 da. Okay, so do you, in in relative to what? Um, okay, so he makes his first year, second year, third year. So that was her fourth year. Tyler's currently in his going into his third year. So let's just assume that he's in his fourth. He'll be making five point seven, uh, five point seven million. WNBA. They actually have this. It's Chicago Sky. I think that's where they said Cheyenne Parker plays. Candace Parker. Cheyenne Parker. Hopefully, I spelled her name correctly. Oh, I did. Okay. Yo, what the fuck? <laughs> Yo, what the hell? Bro, she made oh nah, this video is cap as fuck then. Th this whole like 117 shit is cap. Because this is sport track. Now obviously sport track could be lying or you know uh getting the numbers mixed up, but this has one oh pr no, this is protected money. <laughs> this is protected. Oh nah, she trolling. Nah, she a troll. What is what is Shy? Nah, Shy is a troll, bro. She's a troll. She's a troll. Shorter average fifteen, just chilling. That's cool, man. That's cool. Who's your uh your favorite NBA team? Ended at um, Who's so your favorite NBA team? First round draft pick. That's that's the number. Let me load up the what you call. I would say on average. Let me go. Actually, let me pause that and then load up my chat. Right. So that way on my phone, I can see the messages. I think. Can I do that? Yeah, but did you type it? Portland? Uh, yikes. Yikes. <laughs> yikes. Hey, man, um, I'm gonna be honest. Uh, I, I hate to be one of those cliche guys and be like, uh, it's time. It's time to just get everything out of town and just start over. But it's been like that for a couple years. I sp besides that one year, prior to that one year that you guys made the conference finals, you know, you guys could have obviously done something with that team to try to make it better or whatever, whatever the fuck. You know what I mean? But, yeah, man. That's just crazy. VIP, for sure. But, yeah. And it's like... There's nothing you could really do as of today, except trade. I would say, I, I would, I would personally say trade Dame because you can get the most for him. But it sucks. It sucks. I, I'd feel sick if I was a Portland fan. I'm a Celtics fan, by the way. So the way things are currently set up for the Celtics, I can definitely see. Um. I could definitely see. Um, the Celtics have running into the same problem as the Portland Trailblazers. They had two great stars. One is obviously better than the other. Well, I wouldn't say it, Tatum is definitely better than Brown, but Brown, I feel like is a much more, he's, I feel like he's more, um, he's much more, uh, efficient than Tatum.
as a as a as a scorer at least. Probably a better defender as well. But it's not a wide discrepancy in skill on both on both of those. Been a fan for 32 years. Wow. So you were like around like with like like Rasheed Wallace and like Steve Smith, all those guys. Cause yeah, 32 years, that would make you you had been a fan back in like the 90s, early 90s. I think. Yeah. Been a fan for 32 years. That's crazy. That is wild. This <laughs> is actually. Yeah, I don't I like I like I've been a fan for the Celtics probably I would say 08, but I wasn't really watching basketball back then. I didn't really start watching basketball until like 2010. Um, so I would say from like 2010 till now, I've been a fan of the Celtics. Um, Drexler, Porter, all those guys. Portland needs a four. 32, that's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, we, uh, Wave, um, we're just watching this video about WNBA, WNBA players are delusional. And it's about like the pay gap. I'm using air quotes. And how much money they make. I started in 1990. On top of being a professional athlete, Cheyenne Parker models takes a business program offered by the league. It's crazy. Bro, she makes so that that 117 bullshit is is cap. Because they said that was a, a max salary. That's the most somebody can make. And put that into perspective. Where's uh I have to go all the way. Oh no, no, no. Cheyenne Parker. No, where's the sport track? Here. I, I don't, so I guess I can't see how much money she was making prior to that. This must be her new deal. So, never mind. Forget I said anything. Oh, 2019. She was a free agent. So she, okay, she was making she was making less than the. So she but she's making more now. <laughs> she's making she's making a whole bunch more. Yeah, Jordan. Yeah, yeah, man. Jordan. Jordan was from what I hear at least. I'm not gonna sit here and act like. I just watch Jordan. Like obviously, I you know I seen the Last Dance just like just around just just about like everybody else. But she signed a two hundred and twenty. Yeah, that's one ten a year. One ten a year. Yeah. I just want to know what her rookie salary was. That's it. That's all I want to know. So I can compare that to Tyler Hero, the someone who's also on her uh, rookie salary. But in the off season, like a lot of other players, instead of vacationing, she's strapping up to play again overseas, she's right? Overseas to supplement yeah. her income. No, there is no off season, and if you do have one, it's very short. And then, like for instance, this time I had I had about a month, and in that month I was in five different states. It was exhausting. I'm not gonna lie, it was exhausting. She only had a month off. Only a month. Is that what she said? She had a month off, but when you take into consideration how many games they play in the WNBA, it's a lot less than the NBA. I feel. I hope he says that. I hope that's what he's about to say. Get a month off. At their job. No. Oh. Not many. All right. I know there's people out there. Uh, they, they'll do the thing where they work a, a ton within a certain window. They just work like crazy hours, whether it's a project or something. And then they get like a few weeks off or whatever. Yeah. I don't know about that, but not many people get to have a whole month off. I can't believe this is NBA on the phone. Different states, and she's complaining. Most people I know, they make it to the beach for like one week out of the year. And that's it. That's it. How am I supposed to feel bad yeah. for her? I'll probably actually wear this tomorrow. Parker tried to fit some other work projects in before returning to Chicago Sky training camps over the summer. Black Enterprise says female players can earn about 15 times more playing in a league overseas. But earning that stability comes at a price. How Absolutely. How sustain a lifestyle of really having like a one month off season because you feel like you have to play two seasons? Um, it, it goes back to all the the injuries that occur in the WNBA. They, you know, they say, oh, well, it's because they're women. No, it's not. In fact, it's because... Who the fuck says that? Who the hell says that? <laughs> um, it, it goes back to all the, the injuries that occur in the WNBA. They, you know... They say, oh, well, it's oh, oh, I get it. Oh, I understand what she's trying to say. Like the con, like the, like the, um, the, the mindset of uh, women are weaker than men. Therefore, they're more subject to injury. I, I, I don't, I don't agree with that, but because they're playing against other, well, I guess if they hit the ground, that could be one thing, but I, I, I just personally don't agree with that. In fact, it's because 
It's because of the work that we have to put in. All right. So with a little, uh... research, you can see that most WNBA players they go play in China in the off season. That's where they go for the most part. The work. The league, they have 54 games a year. The WNBA they play 36 games, so they play 90 games out of the year compared okay. to 82 in the NBA. And now, and and that's considering those who actually do go to play overseas. Not all of them do. I would well, actually, I take that back. I I, I try to uh, work from a, like a majority type of like mindset, so the majority of them probably do play overseas. So this probably applies for the majority of them. Uh, if you sweep all the way through the finals, 16 games minimum, uh, which is almost impossible. <laughs> In the Chinese league, uh, you can play a max of five games. There's a couple of rounds, and you, you just play one game. It's single elimination. And then the WNBA, some teams, they'll get buys in the first round. The lowest seeds play. Top seeds There's buys? Uh, and then they get to the second round. That's also single elimination. And then once you're in the semis, they play best of five. And then you get to the finals. It's also best, best of five. So oh, the shit. amount of games the WNBA team can play is seven. Like seven. So and the max is 12. So you could argue uh, the NBA, they play more just because of their playoffs. Um, even the regular season is shorter than the two combined, obviously. Uh, you can argue that. But you could also argue, hey, WNBA players, they play a little bit more. They got that longer regular season, long playoffs as well. You can yeah. make that argument. Either way, both of these arguments, they prove her wrong. <laughs> She's wrong. She acts like playing in two leagues causes all these injury problems that the men just don't have to deal with. But we just went over the numbers. We can see they're about the same. They play a similar amount of games, whether they're in two leagues or not. She's completely wrong. You know, this isn't something that I, I would like to keep doing, you know. So how can I figure out a way to improve my own situation and then my sister, my future daughter, etc. All right. It's about okay. time we found a WNBA player. Okay. With a Let's see what she has to say. For once. Some said Diamond to Shields was out of bounds when she decided to leave the University of Tennessee a year early to play overseas. She had already graduated, but was eligible to play for Tennessee for another year. So at that point, in my mind... You just wanted to make money. Well, if I come back and I play, this is me now working for One year. Good to think yeah. Of as being a provider almost. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, that makes sense. Now in her second season... Why would you why would you play another year in college when you're when you already graduated? So you already got your education, at least the base level of, of what a college a college education uh, can give you. Um, I'm assuming I don't want to actually she got her education. I'm just going to say that. Um, so why would you return to the university if you do, like just to play basketball? Turn the video up a little. pretty loud to me i heard it on the playback but um um oh you know what it probably is it's probably this shit nah because then it's gonna fuck with my mic audio whatever no nah, that's that's loud enough she also has a close is that good enough find her other projects including wait i just played it a little bit is that good enough but anyways back to what i was saying um yeah why would she continue to play at her university if now that she already has her college education, you know, she doesn't she doesn't necessarily need to play to be at the school anymore. She she already graduated, but I don't think she was eligible for the draft, I'm assuming is the case, because why wouldn't she just go into the draft if she was done with school? So I'm, I'm going to assume that she wasn't eligible for the draft. So she went to go play overseas because she got her education, but now she wants to get paid. So that's a, a very reasonable, like, you know, stance from from America. this lady. She also has a close. But I just want I want to hear her thoughts on like the wage, the wages, and shit like that. Help fund her other projects, including a women's amateur athletic team she sponsors. Do you feel like that is fair to have to work more than one job just to make a a wage that you're comfortable with and to be called a professional athlete? <laughs> a wage that you're comfortable <laughs> with? Is this a joke? Is this a joke? Yeah, that, that's crazy. The wage I get paid from YouTube. I demand more. I demand more. I don't need more views. What the hell? And she's crying over making 50K minimum in a year. I mean, that's not even including playing overseas as well as any outside deals they have that make money. They talked about the six other things she does. I mean, she clearly gets money from those. Modeling and all that other so stuff. Thinking like, oh, she does all this and this. Oh, and she only makes 50K. No, the 50K is just from that league. They talk about all these other Thanks. businesses that they have and how they play in a whole nother league 
Don't talk about any of those salaries at all. Like, they're making well over 100 k If they're doing anything right, unless all those businesses and all that side stuff is just garbage, they're making well over 100 k a year. I don't think it's fair, right? But it is what it is. The reality of yeah. It. And I can't. I'm not one of the people to dwell on like problems. At the end of the day, it's not happening for us. Oh, finally somebody who gets it and instead of, you know, crying about the situation, they're pushing themselves and the league to make things better. The main thing that I'm focused on outside of And it's like no is... most professional athletes are tone deaf about how much how much more they make than the rest of us. I wouldn't say they're tone deaf. I just, I, I, I wouldn't say they're tone deaf. I feel like a lot of them kind of forget. Oh, well, that, that, that is kind of tone deaf. I feel like they know, but it's like they've been at a certain level of, you know, financial like security and stuff like that to, to the point where they become deaf to it. They're not just naturally just tone deaf about the reality of like them making money, more money than somebody else. I think that's a thing that they get comfortable making the amount of money that they do. Therefore, they're less likely to understand, not understand, but they're, they become less, uh, I don't want to say empathetic, but that's the only word I can think of right now to the average person that doesn't make, who obviously doesn't make as much money as those guys, people do. Just expanding the platform that I already have um, and then utilizing it properly to help contribute to the growth of the game of women's basketball. And that's something Facts. that Cheyenne mentioned too, like you feel this personal responsibility to help grow, not just the WNBA, but like women's basketball. And also, uh, I'm gonna I'm I'm let her finish you this. You wanna make it mean more. We all have this like uphill battle as far as like equal pay, equal rights, equal opportunity, just equality in general. Right. The issue of equal pay is not specific to women's basketball. Did she just jump on a free throw? But um, oh, well, here's another thing that I want to say. It just popped into my mind, right? The WNBA has been around for let's let. I don't want to click off this video. Uh, WNBA start. I don't know when did they, oh when did the WNBA when did WNBA start? Right? Oh, nigga. <laughs> What what year I guess is what I gotta put in? Oh, since ninety eight. What year did ninety six? That's crazy. Ninety six, right? You'd probably know better than me. You were you know more more coherent at the time. You're probably a child. Um, but nineteen ninety six, right? So essentially, the league has only been around for. No, it's been around for 25 years. Because, no, 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 no. No, yeah, 25, 2006, 2016, all the way up to 2021. Yeah, look, 25. Literally, this it's, it's, the, it's the logo. <laughs> the logo right here, 25. I guess this is like the logo for this upcoming season. 20, 25, XX, the four room in, uh, with the four stripes and then the, and then the diagonal stripe going into it. It's 25, right? So, in a, uh, compared to the NBA, right? Because we're comparing the salaries of WNBA players to NBA players, right? The WNBA is still in its infancy. It's still in the beginning of its, like, trajectory, right? Or, or of, it, of its, like, timeline. If you, if you want to go back into the point, and not even just NBA, sports in general, players... Players in sports that were only 20 to 25 years old were not making any cash. You hear all the time from guys who used to watch guys like uh, Will Chamberlain, Bill Russell, all, Jerry West, all those old guys from back in the day that people, uh, Jerry West, the logo, right? Those guys weren't making money either. There's a reason why people, when people talk about like Bill Russell and stuff like that, they discredit him by saying, well, he was playing, he was playing against a bunch of fucking mailmen and, and milkmen and all that other stuff, which is true because guys had to work. Uh, second jobs because the the job that they were working the NBA or the the job that they were playing from um, sport right wasn't making enough money for them to just live on their own right so therefore maybe the WNBA is is at that point for the maybe the WNBA right now is where the all, all the other sports were at that point in time where maybe 
you're just not making that much money in the beginning, in the infancy stage of the league or whatever. But you guys build up the league and you guys get it to a point where maybe another 25 years down the line, the players who are playing then can, pl can get paid a whole bunch, a whole lot more money than you are currently. But I'm pretty sure if you ask uh, a lot of the WNBA players, and this is just me assuming, if they're comfortable with that being the case, a lot of them probably wouldn't be comfortable with, comfortable with that being the case because they want to make as much money as the male counterparts. But you have to, I don't, I don't want to have to keep reiterating myself, but you have to make, you only are able to make what your employer is bringing in. More, pretty much. But let's let's finish this. Let's Forbes finish this. 2018 highest paid athletes list to prove it. It didn't include a single woman. Exactly. The year before, tennis player Serena Williams was the only female athlete to make the list. They make it out. Wait, what was, what was it? Athletes list to prove it. That's crazy. Floyd Floyd been like the top earner for like at least ten years, it didn't bro. Include a single woman. The year before, tennis player Serena Williams was the only female athlete to make the list. But wasn't she pregnant like the past year? Sexism wasn't Serena pregnant in 2018? So her, them saying that she wasn't even on the list is kind of like a... What's the phrase? What's the phrase? It's kind of like a... a it's like a bait a bait point. It's a baiting point. It's a, it's a it's trying to bait you into like believing what it is they're trying to say when it when in all actuality is... She couldn't make money from the sport itself. She could make money off her endorsements, but she couldn't make money from the sport itself because she wasn't competing. She has her endorsements with Wilson and Gatorade, and I don't know if she has a shoe sponsor, but she's able to make money from that. But that money isn't enough to probably make her, to have her on the Forbes list. Come on, man. <laughs> really, it's just telling about how people feel about women's sports. They don't really enjoy it like they do the men. Tennis is one of the very few sports credited with getting it right. Everyone thinks women should be thrilled when we get crumbs, okay? And I want women to have the cake, the icing, and the cherry on top, too. That's because of Billie Jean King. The former professional tennis player threatened to boycott the U.S. Open in 1973 over pay disparities. As a result, it became the first major tournament okay. to give both the male and female winners equal, equal compensation. Money. The irony is tennis doesn't even get it right. Yeah, they pay the men and women the same in major tournaments, but the men have to play a best of five, and the women play a best of three. The men mm. play longer matches, and they get paid the same. It's not even right. The one thing that they claim is equal is not even right. Pay disparity between the men and women is, is just too large, and, and we want to continue. The, the U.S. women's soccer team? <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of thrown aback because it's like, don't the female, doesn't the U.S. women's national soccer team, however they phrase it, make more money than the men, men's soccer team? <laughs> isn't, isn't that like a fact? Because they, because they're, you know, when it comes to soccer, they're the best in the world on their, on their, on their end of the spectrum. So it's like, uh, I have to watch. Similar fights are still happening. The world title holding U.S. women's soccer team sued USA Soccer to get paid as much as the men who hadn't won a title in years. Okay, okay, okay. I'll shut up. I'll shut up. Make more. In oh shit! I didn't want a title in years. <laughs> nah, he's shooting from the hip. What he say? USA Soccer to get paid as much as the men who hadn't won a title in years. If they beat some fifteen-year-old boys, I bet they would make more. Oh shit. Also, what are they saying that the women's like men's national team? I mean, the women's national team are playing like a bunch of like underdeveloped, like younger players. In more than two hundred U.S. Okay. Men's hockey players, said plus it's an individual sport, and you can't value players the same in a team sport. Exactly. Yeah, that's true as well. They won't play professionally in the twenty nineteen season unless they can make a sustainable living. I really hate. Was that the soccer team guy, thing still? But I really didn't know there was a professional women's hockey league in the U.S. I oh, shit. Now, that was hockey? That, no, that was that was hockey. <laughs> I didn't even know there was a, a professional, like, hockey team. They won't play professionally in the 2019 season unless they can make a sustainable living. I really hate to be... Wait, so how much do female hockey players get paid? How much does... Female hockey players get paid. 
NWA. What? Doubles the oh the salary cap. Oh shit, that's crazy. It doubles the league salary. I want I want to know what the salary is though. Why? Why is this information? Is it on here? Oh, it is. Current roster. Let's take McKenna Brand here. Oh, they're under contract, and it doesn't even like it doesn't even give any specification as to how much money they make. It's crazy. This team is full of people who were born in the nineties. <laughs> I want. Oh, there's only like six teams. I don't see no nineteen ninety eight. Oh, nineteen eighty eight. Here we go. She's thirty two. She's probably the oldest person in the league. And we could probably find that out because there's not that many teams. She's 32. She's 32 as well. She was born in 89, so the other girl is older. The Metropolitan Riveters. Oh, she got 34-year-old kicking in this bitch. <laughs> you got a 34-year-old hockey player. 30. Oh, nah, she's a demon. Nah, she has to be the best. She has to be the best. She's 37 getting active with him. She had 43? Nah, that's crazy. 39. Nah, this is the veteran team. This has to be like the... No, this is probably the best team. They got vets. <laughs> they got that... They got that... That that mentorship. Yeah, they got... They got... Yeah, they're probably... They probably won. I'm keeping it a stack. They probably won. They got the oldest team. So they got that... You know, that experience that... That grittiness to them. That old men's strength. Well, old women's strength. Be that guy, but I really didn't know there was a professional women's hockey league in the U.S. I honestly did not know. To entertain the other side of this, there are, and I research, people who will say that the WNBA season is shorter, brings in less money. Of course, they're going to make less. Is that? Is that not a reasonable? Is that not a reasonable like way of going about paying your players? You 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 going to pay them the money that you make. Well, you're going to pay the teams that the money that the league makes, and then the team is going to pay its employees. And the players are I don't want to have to say employees. That sounds fucked up. But and essentially they are employees. If you think about it from like a from a business standpoint, like Coca Cola. You know what I mean? They pay their employees and it trickles down all the way down to the workers and maybe even like the janitors, right? So, um, yeah, is that not like a reasonable way of going about, you know, paying the players? Let me go back. The season is shorter, brings in less money, of course they're going to make less. Is that a fair argument to make? They are actually accommodating us so that we can go overseas to give us that, op that, that chance, that option. Because if they were to extend, if they were to extend the season, we wouldn't be able to go overseas, and then we wouldn't make the money that we need to make. You see, billionaire owners—they all have one thing in common: they love to make money. They love it. And if they thought that expanding the WNBA season would make more money, they would fucking do it. We cannot survive. Off that is true as well. As an athlete, as a professional athlete who needs that is a valid argument. If if billionaires billionaires like to make money, so if something if they can prolong something in an attempt to make more money, they would do it absolutely. But the thing is, a long over the long term, over over a long period of time, the WNBA is going to lose interest because it's going. What is the WNBA season? Let's let's look at that. WNBA season start. It starts when? It's telling me a whole bunch of other shit. May. In a, in a regular setting, starting it in May makes sense. Because the playoffs are on. The playoffs, the playoffs are on, right? Because you wanna you wanna play at a point where you want the you want the majority of the season to be played when there's no actual NBA basketball, right? But you also don't want to have it trickle down or go into when the season starts back up. Also, you don't want it to trickle. You don't. You also don't want it to go into. Um, you also don't want it to go um, to go head to head with with the NFL. Even though the NFL plays on specific days, Mondays, Thursdays, and 
Sunday, Saturdays for like wild card playoff games and stuff like that. So you don't want it to have it go up against any other big sport. Now it'll go up against baseball, but baseball ratings are also have also been down because people don't of you know of modern age don't actually watch baseball as compared to like 15 20 years ago so you don't want it to have it go on through the main you don't want it to go on it could go on during the playoffs but from may june there's no nba or the nba season is ending july there's no real other competition besides mlb exactly baseball is too long and then august you know, summer camp and uh, preseason and all that for football starts to start up. And you literally, like, September 19th or, like, or maybe even the week before, actually, is when the NFL season starts. So this is a pretty good, like, window for the WNBA to make money. It's a good window to have the NBA season to be played. Because people are going to rather watch. Because if you try to play at the same time as NBA, the ratings are going to be even more worse. Right. The ratings are going to be more worse because people are going to choose the NBA over the WNBA. But um, also. Um, damn, what was I going to say? Uh, and, and, and the football thing, people are going to choose to watch football on a on a regular basis as opposed to um, the WNBA. Like, and it all it, and it literally all just. What the fuck? It literally just all goes back to what I said. The WNBA is in its infancy. The the amount of money they make right now, it's it's compared compared to the WNBA. I mean, compared to NBA players, it's a crazy significant gap, right? But you're making a hundred thousand dollars a year. Uh, now, obviously, that's before taxes, but the majority of them go to play overseas. So you tack on that extra money. You're making well over $100,000 a year, and that's not even considering whether or not they have other businesses going on. You know what I mean? If they, like, are, are models, or if they, like I said, the whole Airbnb thing. You, you, you buy a condo, you furnish it, and you rent it out on Airbnb. That thing will end up paying for itself, especially if you live, especially, let's say you play, I don't know, the WNBA teams or where they are. Chicago. That's where uh, Cheyenne plays, right? Cheyenne, she plays for the Chicago Sky. Chicago is a pretty big market city. You could rent a condo out in downtown Chicago or a loft or wherever, a, a nice place in the city, and you can rent it out. Not rent it out, you can, you can purchase it or rent it out, it doesn't really matter. And then you could um, put it out put it on Airbnb as a place for people to stay whenever they're in town and they want to have a spot to stay in. So, no, nah, there's no way there's this many NBA teams, but uh, WNBA teams. But um, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm not pausing. For the, I'm gonna try not to pause at least. We're finishing this video. To invest in a trainer. I've almost been watching this for like forty minutes. You know, these are things that professional athletes have to afford to do, and off of the the salaries that we make here, it's impossible to. Yeah, technically, everyone who works a job is a professional. So yeah, not everybody makes enough money to be able to turn it and invest it in themselves like that. You know, they need it to live. So uh, the WNBA is a failing business that needs help keeping afloat. So, of course, they're going to be on the lower side of wages when it comes to professional sports. Can mm -hmm. you imagine what your life would be like if you didn't do all that other stuff and you just tried to live off of what you made in the WNBA? Is that even an option for you? <laughs> it's not an option. <laughs> Why I is that laughable, though? Because it's just not an option. To Shields and Parker are hopeful one day the WNBA will be able to pay its athletes millions of dollars. So what is your message to the sporting industry about why women deserve to make just as much as men do? Just wake up. Wake up. <laughs> and yeah, I don't know. I don't know. What do you mean by what, man? Women, where are, where are we at? What, was, what are you wanting to? Women completely out of the equation. Where are we? And, and if you really ask yourself that and really think about that, that I mean, that's really all that needs to be said. That that itself explains why we need we deserve to be paid, because what do we do for the world? Quite a lot. Because women do a lot for the world. WNBA players need to be paid more. Oh, yeah. She can absolutely live on just basketball. 
What the fuck? <laughs> now the lifestyle, just, now the lifestyle she wants to live, which is probably an extravagant one. Is it sustainable just playing basketball? Probably not. But at the same time, you chose that profession. You you knew going into it at the time. Basketball WNBA players do not get paid a lot, and it has nothing to do with the fact that you're a woman. It has nothing to do. With any, I just said I wasn't gonna pause it. I fucking lied. Oh my god! But um, yeah, I said it already before. It, it's strictly based on how much money the league makes. Therefore, it can it can pay the teams, and then the teams can pay the players, the coaching staff, all the all that other stuff. If you really want to talk about, if you really want to, I'm I'm before the NCAA athletes were able to make money off their likeness and you know monetize and all that other stuff. I would go to bat about them being able to make money before, um, and they and if I'm not mistaken, NCAA athletes still don't make a wage. You know what I mean? I still don't think they make a salary. I think they're able to monetize, um, like doing endorsements and stuff like that, and um, all that other stuff, right? So, yeah, man. At the end of the day, the league is going to be able to pay its players the amount of money it brings in. I mean, it's going to be able to pay the teams, and the teams are going to be able to pay the players. And the league is still in its infancy compared to the NBA. Because all of this, this whole video is about in comparison as to what the WNBA players make as opposed to the NBA. I feel like I said that like five times already, but to close out this video, um, that's another point I, I will make. I don't even understand the level of arrogance this female is displaying. We woke up tomorrow and women's basketball is just never played again. Just ever again. <laughs> Nobody would even bat a fucking eye. Alright, he's he's going. He, Alright, he's OD. He's OD. He's OD. There might be some truth to that, but I feel like he's OD. Jimmy High Roller dropped a new video. Oh my god. 